So something's happening that's scaring the heck out of a load of commercial photographers, and that's AI photography, okay? And I think a lot of people are worried they're going to come and uh, lose their jobs. So in this video, I'm going to cover kind of what's been happening recently um, to do with AI in like kind of awards, kind of NGOs, charities and businesses, but also why I'm not worried. So if you watch to the end, hopefully, uh, you'll feel a bit better about the whole situation, okay? So first of all, wow, um, mid-journey, amazing, all right? Just as someone who's, for me personally, into like science fiction and fantasy, I'm really enjoying some of the outputs that I'm seeing um, with it. Uh, particularly, I follow someone on Instagram called The Creatureverse, and it's just crazy. They're kind of the most nightmarish, freaky-deaky, just really bizarre sci-fi horror, just absolute nightmares. It's like like literally, like literally looking at a bad trip, okay? And for me, on a creative level, just someone who appreciates art and appreciates cool stuff, I think that's amazing. But there's something else going on, and... Um, that's the generating of images, which are very, very close to being photorealistic now. A lot of people not being able to tell the difference. I mean, I'll confess, I'll show you a photo later on that to me, wow, you know what? Totally buy it. Um, but it's the fact that people are putting out little kind of sets of various photographers' photographs so people can then input in AI and kind of rip off their style. Okay, there's one guy I saw on Twitter, and yeah, selling a link, free packs, download it. You want to shoot like Richard Abdon, you want to shoot like Arbus, you want to shoot like Bresson, whatever. And there's all these little style things, and wow, man, like, imagine you spent like a lifetime developing kind of your own distinctive visual style, and then someone just takes those samples, puts in some prompts, and generates an image in that way. So again, this is like... I mean, is it a copyright thing? We know we really need to get into that, okay? It's it's kind of terrifying for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, that's one thing that's obviously a really big deal. But really, before, for me, a lot of the AI illustrations, um, they just look like really bad over Photoshop photographs, you know? There's a whole slew, you know the photos I'm talking, I'm not gonna show anyone, but you know the photos I'm talking about where it's a portrait and the skin's smooth to heck and the background's wild and HDR overdrive, do you know what I mean? Those kinds of images. And in the beginning, the AI photography, it just kind of looked a bit like them. And again, that's cool because I'm not interested in that at all. But obviously it's rapidly, rapidly improved, okay? To the point where people who know better should probably getting duped here. So there was a winner at the Sony World Photo Award this year, and let me just double check here, the creative category, and it was the photographer Boris Elgunson, I hope I pronounced that correctly, and essentially it was just an image, two kind of women generated an AI, and that guy submitted it and won, and then confessed saying, hey, I don't want the award, you know, I just want to sort of try it out and see, yeah, you know, it was easy to get this through and we need to talk about this. And they gave him the award anyway, so he had to go up to the podium and then reject the award, okay? So it's wild he did that. And also now, if you look at the image, man, there was a thing with, say, Mid Journey before where they couldn't quite get hands right, you know? But unbelievably, even from those weeks ago, it's, it's improved even more. So this is just rapidly getting better and better. It's going to be harder and harder for people to differentiate between these AI illustrations and photography. Now, what does that mean? Well, for me as a freelancer, I've done 2,000 assignments, right? I paid to be a photographer. And the idea that someone might just be like, well, we could hire the photographer and we could do this and we could no negotiate the usage over a number of years and pay him a fee and the camera hire and blah, blah, blah. Or you just type in some keyword prompts and away you go. Kind of terrifying, okay? And it's been a bit worrying that some companies have already jumped on this. But like most things that companies do, they're kind of stealthing it in. So the first thing I was aware of was Levi's um, using AI models to supplement existing models um, showing their clothes online. And the excuse they gave, the reason, was to do with diversity. Now, that's pretty wild. I'm pretty sure if you wanted to find some models, some more diverse models, if you really wanted to, you know what, you could. You really could. Um, and the devastating thing for lots of photographers is that it's not just them. Okay, so the photographer didn't take that photograph, but the stylist didn't get hired, the studio didn't get hired, and all the people who work in the studio, the retoucher, the hair and makeup team, 
uh, possibly the agency the photographer worked for, possibly the agency the hair and makeup person worked for. You see, you see where this is going. So that's a whole swathe of people just lost work. Okay, so that is pretty terrifying. Okay, fair dues. Um, on the flip side as well, you've got Amnesty International who wanted to use an image to illustrate a protest. And again, I've done protest photography for 20 years, okay? Um, anything going down, there are amazing protest photographers all over the world. If they really wanted to, they could have sourced a really cool protest photo. But again, a bit like Levi's diversity claim, they said by generating an image in AI, they were protecting the protesters. Now, we've seen this before. It was a few years ago. I think it was maybe during the Black Lives Matter protests. We'll have to fact check this. I'm just riffing now. But people got upset about people's identities being shown, saying, oh, you need to blur faces. Now, for me, again, as a photojournalist of some 20 years, I think that's a terrible idea because basically you're self-censoring. And what that falls into then is let's say you've got some despot who's running the show in your country. They can be like, yeah, there's no protest. Look, all these images, it's all, it's not real. These aren't real people, they're all blurred, or they're, it's all AI, it's not really happening. So again, it's a slippery slope. So it's good to see that Amnesty had a lot of pushback against that, because again, it's a worrying trend, okay? So early in the video, I said how some of the AI photography was getting pretty damn good. Check out this tasty burger. Oh, look at it, look at that tasty burger. Totally makes you wanna eat a burger, totally fake. So again, this is something we'd seen years before with like people who did automotive photography where cars were just sort of generated by CGI. Um, now it begs the question, if you just want someone to eat the tasty burger, like do you need to hire the food stylist, the photographer, the location, blah, blah, blah. So again, very worrying trend for lots of commercial photographers. Now, why am I seemingly so happy? It's horrible, I know, but there is a way through this, okay? And for me, just as a freelancer, um, over the weekend, I had to photograph a load of young people who wanted to become doctors. And they were taking part in like kind of a simulated hospital environment. They were doing ultrasounds and cool stuff like that. And at the end, they were given a certificate and did a little handshake grip and grin, okay? The parents were there. The parents don't want to see AI generated photographs of their kids doing the tasks. They want to see the tasks. Okay, we just had a coronation of the king here in the UK. People didn't want to see AI generated images of the king. Well, yeah, there were some floating around and dancing and crazy stuff like that, but they want to see what actually happened. Okay, so on that front, I think some, some fields of photography might just about skate through some of this. So, you know, there is a bit of hope. But what is the big equalizer? What is the big leveler for me? Why I'm totally not worried at all. I'll tell you why. The AI pho photographs, the photo photographs, they're not real. And my whole journey as a photographer has been about photographing the real world, about meeting real people, okay? So you might look at that portrait, of that AI illustration and think, wow, yeah, that looks really cool, that person looks really cool. But there's nothing to it. It's literally soulless. There's nothing going on. A few weeks ago, I published my last book, When in the Lone Star State. And an article went out on Huck magazine. And it's, check this out. I got an email from a guy saying, hey, that's my dad in the book. He passed away last April. And on the day we saw the article on Huck, it was his sister's birthday. And my mum said it was like he was talking to us through the photograph. Yeah, AI photography is not gonna do that, okay? So, what I would like you to do, if you're up for it, um, I'm on Instagram as Mr. Ed Thompson. Tag some of your photos, your best portraits with amazing stories, okay? Real stories with hashtag pictures on my mind. And we'll do a little segment afterwards where I'll, I'll get into it. Maybe you can share some of your amazing stories because that's the thing, isn't it? Like, photography is not illustration. Photography is something else. Photography is the ability to freeze a moment in space and time forever, a real moment. And I think that's where, in this crazy world of AI and AI imagery and everything that's going on, photography can still have a place because it's real, okay? So try to get some sleep, don't worry too much, but photography will go on.